imagine if you are in this situation, it will be hard to believe. Hey everyone, Henry Yellow here, welcome back. Today we are going to watch A Beautiful Mind directed by Ron Howard and the main character is played by Russell Crowe. Now this movie was nominated for a lot of awards and it won plenty. And by plenty, I mean a whole lot. But before we get to that, I found out that this film is actually about the mathematician uh, named John Nash, who is a real person and he's a Nobel laureate in economics. Some of the awards that A Beautiful Mind won included the Best Picture, uh, Best Director for Ron Howard, the Best uh, Supporting Actress for Jennifer Connelly, the Best Actor for Russell Crowe. And here's a funny thing, uh, I'll just show it on the screen here. Ron Howard also won the worst foreign director in the Yoga Awards. I don't even know how that happened, not even sure if that's a good thing. Uh, that's quite strange. They also got the best original song, which is All Love Can Be. Interesting, I'll uh, have a listen on, on that song later on in the movie. Before we start the movie, uh, as you all can see, I got myself a new microphone. So I've actually spent like the past couple of days just trying to adjust all the settings because no matter how I adjust it, it just, you know, it, it just doesn't sound right. At least to me anyway, I'm not sure where the problem lies. Like, I have put a lot of filters on the OBS Studio because that's what I'm using and to, to make the mic sound much better. But there's always just that little bit of problem you know i tested far distance close distance talking and i tested all the what compressors noise gate the limiter the, the whatever like there's a lot of stuff that i tested out but it always sounds a little bit off and i can't quite put my finger on what exactly is wrong so i decided yeah just record it because i don't want to waste so much time because i've tested it hundreds of times and i didn't want to waste any more time with the recording so i decided yeah just go for it sounds okay right now so yeah let's watch a beautiful mind oh the orchestra is coming in oh, i can imagine <laughs> imagine i can imagine the conductor just you know leading the orchestra Oh, piano. The stated goal of the Soviets is global communism. Now, who among you will be the next Morse? Morse code? Morse? Today, we bequeath America's future into your able hands. Welcome to Princeton, gentlemen. You know, I also saw that uh, John Nash was actually an asocial person, which means he hates social interactions. Not an introvert. He's, you know, sometimes hostile to others and... He's just asocial. Wheeler Lab, the new military think tank at MIT. Good hands as used to be. President. Wow, he matches the design on the tie. Yeah, I'll take another. Pardons, I simply assumed you were the waiter. Play nice, handsome. Nice is not handsome, strong suit. I've uh, read your preprints, and I am supremely confident that there is not a single seminal or innovative idea in either one of them. Roasting his work. The prodigal roommate arrives. Roommate. John Nash. Who? Oh. Charles Herman. Charles Please Herman. Finish. It's like the exact opposite of John. D.H. Lawrence, you're not easily distracted, are you? I'm here to work. Crikey. Crikey. Is my roommate a dick? Depends on your perspective. She told me that I was born with two helpings of brain, but only half a helping of heart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like people much. I cannot waste time with these classes and these books memorizing the weak assumptions of lesser mortals. So he wants to achieve some kind of higher like achievement or something. Distinguish himself. Who does he want to prove himself to? Come on, Bender. Whoever wins, Saul does his laundry all semester. Is that sound fair to anyone else? I'm hoping to extract an algorithm to define the movement. Whoa, that's... They move almost randomly, you know? It's like huge variables everywhere. You scared? Terrified. Mortified. Petrified. Stupefied by you. You know, John has this kind of accent which to me sounds almost similar to... 
Dives out. But Nash achievements, zero. What if you never come up with your original idea? Okay, they're competing like awards and achievements. What if you lose? You should not have won. The game is flawed. Gentlemen, the great John Nash. It's just a game, John. This is a group playing touch football. This is a cluster of pigeons fighting over breadcrumbs. And this here is a woman who is chasing a man who stole her purse. He's just randomly trying to find ideas. That's weird. <laughs> My niece knows that. John, she's about this high. See, if I could derive an equilibrium where nobody loses, you imagine the effect that that would have on conflict scenarios. When did you last eat? You know, food. So he's trying to make every conflict a zero, not become not a zero sum game. Like both sides can win instead of one win, one loses. Go with God. Wow. Come back, a man. Hi. I don't exactly know what I'm required to say in order for you to have intercourse with me. But could we assume that I said all that? Oh. But essentially, we're talking about fluid exchange, right? <laughs> fluid exchange. Uh, that's one way. Oh. I especially like the bit about fluid exchange. It was really charming. If only it was that easy. But nowadays, you know, that line could actually work. Maybe with a low chance of success, but it actually would work. Your Second. fellows have attended classes. They've written papers. They've published. Oh, well, I, I'm still searching for your original, original idea. Yes, government yeah. dynamics. Progress is better than perfection. Do you see what they're doing in there? It's the pens reserved for a member of the department that makes the achievement of a lifetime. Oh, the pens, like literal pens. Recognition. Try saying accomplishment. Is that what John is looking for? Recognition. Oh. Oh, 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 he's having a nervous breakdown. What the hell is your problem? It's not my problem. And it's not your problem. It's their problem. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The Isaac Newton fellow was right. He was obviously clever, right? Well, Charles did a good job calming John down. The reason he mentioned Charles, uh, Isaac Newton is because Isaac was the one who discovered gravity, right? Anyone else feels she should be moving in slow motion? Uh, <laughs> competition. Individual ambition serves the common good. Exactly. You can lead a blonde to water, but you can't make a drink. <laughs> I don't think he said that. Alright, nobody move. If we all go for the blonde, not a single one of us is gonna get him. But if no one goes for the blonde, we don't get in each other's way. And we don't insult the other girls. That's the only way we all get laid. <laughs> well, that's quite the hypothesis. The best result would come from everyone in the group doing what's best for himself and the group. <laughs> hmm. Thank you. <laughs> He's flabbergasted. At this point, I'm lost. I don't. I've never studied anything similar to this. So he's found this inspiration from the girl. You do realize this flies in the face of 150 years of economic theory. Yes, I do. Sir. With the breakthrough of this magnitude. I'm confident you will get any placement you like. So he's done it. They'll ask you to recommend two team members. Uh, <laughs> Saul and uh, Bender, sir. Has it occurred to you, Mr. Nash, that Saul and Bender might have plans of their own? <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> Governing dynamics. Congratulations, John. Yeah, congratulations. On the Pentagon. Five years later, 1953. Oh, is this where John is now? He's working for the Pentagon? General, this is the team leader, Dr. John Nash. We've been intercepting radio transmissions from Moscow. He's looked so much mature now. That's like some kind of skill and talent to be able to see and calculate in your head. That's a whole different superpower on its own. I need a map. Wow, imagine solving it in one day. These are latitudes and longitudes. Or at least ten others. Extraordinary. Extraordinary indeed. Part of the Russians moving, General. Captain Rogers will escort you to the unrestricted area, Doctor. Thank you. Classified information. The Russians have the H-bomb. 
And that is a repatriating South America. I am doing stress tests on the dam. You made the cover of Fortune. And that was supposed to be just me. He's still looking for recognition even now. Anyway, you got 10 minutes before a new class. Calculus? He's teaching calculus now. The eager young minds of tomorrow. Can we leave one open, Professor? It's really hot, sir. Your comfort comes second to my ability to hear my own voice. Oh. I think this class will be a waste of your, and what is infinitely worse, my time. This. Really? Anything for a beautiful girl, right? This problem here will take some of you many months to solve. Professor Nash. William Parcher. Oppenheimer used to say genius sees the answer before the question. <laughs> Oppenheimer. I haven't watched the movie yet. We incinerated 150,000 people in a heartbeat. Great deeds come at great cost, Mr. Parcher. Conviction is a luxury of those on the sidelines, Mr. Nash. True. Easy enough to say it when you're a bystander. No family. No close friends. Mainly it's because people don't like me. Your lack of personal connection would be considered an advantage. Such as being a spy? We were told during our initial briefing that these warehouses were abandoned. All these flashing lights and everything. I don't even know if this is really how it looks like in a spy laboratory. Increasing your security clearance to top secret. Disclosure of secure mm -hmm. information can result in imprisonment. Those are a good idea. Remote control? But I haven't had remote controls yet this time. The new freedom has control of the bomb. Their plan is to incur maximum civilian casualties. Ooh. And is capable of as much atrocity as he has imagination. New Freedom communicates to its agents through codes embedded in newspapers and magazines. What exactly is it that you would like me to do? Scan each new issue, find any hidden codes, decipher them. Imagine how difficult it must be to scan any possible hidden codes. How do you even know there will be hidden codes? What just did they do? Radium diode. Oh, what? Don't worry, it's safe. You sure? It sounds very radioactive, though. Wow, oh, imagine trying to find hidden codes everywhere you look. Oh, you must be really important. He is now. What are you working on? Classified. Classified. You missed class today. I suspect that uh, nobody missed me. I solved it. Oh. The solution is elegant. Ultimately incorrect. I'm wondering, Professor Nash, if I can ask you to dinner. Oh, she's being straightforward. Love that. I'll pick you up Friday at 8. You have a, a name, or should I just keep calling you Miss? May I present? Miss Michelard. Michelard. She just told him her name now, not just now. You boys need to look good. Well, she folded her long hair very nicely. God must be a painter. Why else do we have so many colors? So you're a painter? Yes. I am. What is going on there? They're, they're targeting him. Here. Me. You're dead. <laughs> She's quite assertive, isn't she? Thank you for that. Keep it. I believe in deciding things will be good luck. I don't believe in luck. But I do believe in the signing value of things. I once tried to count them all. We made it to 4,348. You are exceptionally odd. Which makes you two high enough compatible, I guess. A pair of odd ducks, then. Pick a shape. Triangle. Pick a shape. An animal. Anything. Koala bear. An umbrella. Did you count? Octopus. There are so many stars in the sky, you could really do any shape you want. Nowadays, when you look up in the sky, you can barely see any stars. Because of light pollution, not because there are no stars. $300 a month? How do you survive on that? 
Oh, damn. How do you see that? Oh, a wax seal. Thought it was bleeding. Who were those two guys earlier at the party? I think they're targeting him. You should be more careful. Work is all he has. That's all he has. I have a tendency to expedite information flow by being direct. Try me. I do direct it. Which will require as we continue in the number of platonic activities. Platonic activities. All I really want to do is have intercourse with you as soon as possible. Now that is direct. See, that could work. You're just going to find the right girl. Some people right, like to beat around the bush, some people like directness. How is that result? Beyond expectations. What are you doing? Do I know you? Prodigal roommates. Charles Herman. Returns. My sister got herself killed in the car crash. My husband was too drunk to know that he was too drunk to drive. The pigeons don't even fly away. Dang. So small. Well, she's young, Jules. How they come? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I met a girl. No, a human girl. <laughs> a bipedal. Yeah. Wow, there's no accounting for taste, is there? Should I marry her? Oh, that's fast. How do you know for sure? Nothing's ever for sure, John. Yeah, that's the toughest question. You can't ever know anything for sure. You should just be direct. Just ask her directly. Would you marry me? I just lost the track. That don't work. Sorry. Birthday. As you see, they create a full wavelength dispersal. So if you look inside it, you can see every possible color. And you said that Tom God must be a painter because of all the colors. Oh, he remembered. Yeah, that's plus points for him. Oh, it's listed. At least it's our least to warrant long term commitment. I need some kind of proof, some kind of verifiable data. This can't be a moment to um, redefine my girlish notions of romance. <laughs> yeah, she has to redefine it. How big is the universe? Infinite. Infinite, yeah. You haven't seen it. No. How do you know for sure? I don't know. Ah, just... All right. Dang, that's a great way to put it. I love that. Some things don't need proof. Yeah. Oh, she said yes. <laughs> See, people didn't think he'd be able to find someone, a partner, but he did. He found the perfect partner for him. See, as long as you never give up, there's plenty of fish in the sea, you'll find someone. But yeah, now he has a wife, he has a, you know, connection with someone. They can use Alicia to threaten him. Hurry. They're following us. Who? The Soviets? Drops been compromised. Get out! Ooh. Oh crap. Dude, the fact that it's a fast car chase and they put this kind of music. Take the no! Oh, nice shot. And while driving, too. Uh oh. music isn't the perfect fit for the car chase, but I feel like it has its charm. Hi. Oh, she really is a painter. Look at that. Are you alright? No, he's not alright. Come on, open the door. Let me in. Talk to me. Open the door. John. Back the door slams. I understand. Better than you could possibly imagine. He's traumatized. Some kind of PTSD, I guess. Alicia's pregnant. What? I told you attachments were dangerous. But I'll just quit. 
you won't. You can't. Because I keep the Russians from knowing you work for us. And once they're in, they can't get out. Not until the mission's accomplished. Parcher! No, you all right? John. <clears throat> Turn off the light! What is wrong with you? I have to go to your sisters. When you get to your sisters, you wait for me to call you. No, I'm not leaving! Stop! Stop it! I'll explain when I can. Do they already know where he lives? Or is it just some random people and he's being paranoid? A conventional North Korea boot. Variables are impossible to silent. Rational. Value. Maybe they're here to protect him instead of trying to kill him? Oh, Professor Nash? My name is Rosen. Rosen. Dr. Rosen, I'm a psychiatrist. Oh, a psychiatrist? Oh, that was sudden. Why would a psychiatrist take him away, assuming he really is a psychiatrist, and everyone else just watched? You've got one hell of a right hook. MacArthur Psychiatric Hospital. What? Unless Charles betrayed him? Prodigal roommate revealed. You lied, Charles! No one met Charles. No one He's right there. Wait. Are you saying Charles is not real? Charles and his niece is a figment of his imagination? Charles is schizophrenic. Schizophrenia? People with this disorder are often Since paranoid. when? He's seen Charles since, like, years ago. His illness may have gone untreated far longer than is typical. Wait a minute. Then is William Parcher real? Charles is an imaginary. He and John have been best friends since Princeton. Have you ever met Charles? Did you ever come to dinner? According to the housing records, John lived alone. Oh. So John imagined Charles since the beginning? Then what about the numbers on his hands, or what is he delivering in that postal box? And now I don't even know what's real and what's not. You mentioned uh, a supervisor. Right. Maybe Mr. Parcher can clarify things for us. You want me to help you get the details of my husband's work? John thinks I'm a Russian spy. You might still be, if William Parcher is real. No, you can't go in his office. You know it's classified, Alicia. Stop! Oh! oh. Okay, right now it all depends on if William Parcher is real. If William is real, what he's working on is real. It was eyes only, top secret, part of the military. Was he? Is this all he's been doing every day? Well, not all. What? They even know that he comes here? Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, this proves it. He imagined everything. At least Alicia wasn't his imagination. Everything's gonna be alright. Just have to talk quietly. They may be listening. You have to get to Wheeler. Stop. You have to find Stop. William Parcher. He can Stop. help us. He can help us. Stop! Stop! There is no William Parcher. So I'll follow you. All the mail was there. It isn't real. Oh my god, imagine if you're in this situation. Oh It'll be Baby, hard to believe. You're sick. So hard to believe that everything isn't real. John! How could he accept that all the things that he's been doing isn't real? Oh, he's trying to dig out the, the, the thing. The radium diode. The implant's gone. I can't find it. Mm, there was no implant. It's a nightmare. It's schizophrenia. It's Schizophrenia curable? What's true. Yeah, you can't tell what's true and what's not. But you would suddenly learn that the people, the places, most important to you, were not gone, but worse, had never been. 
What kind of hell would that be? Yeah, your entire reality is just flipped. You must feel so lost. What are they gonna do though? What can they do? How are they gonna help him? I don't get it, what's happening? Five times a week. For ten weeks. What is this, a way to cure schizophrenia? Like, why is he having seizures though? I don't know much about schizophrenia, so I... One year later. I think often what I feel is obligation or guilt over wanting to leave. Then I look at him. I force myself to see the man that I married. Or I'm transformed into someone who loves him. I think John is a very lucky man. Yes, he is. So unlucky. The burden that Alicia must feel. You met Harvey? Uh, Harvey. John, that's okay. Relax, it's okay. There's no point in being nuts if you can't have a little fun. Jesus Christ, John. <laughs> At least he can make jokes. I can take those later. You're supposed to take them in. Yeah, he's ashamed to have to take the medicine in front of his friend. I'm trying to solve the remark hypothesis. Okay. Uh -huh. There are uh, other things besides, besides work. What are they? Like, well, work has been his life. Work is life. Oh well, yeah, he can focus on the baby. But why does he seem so sad? He clearly doesn't find any joy or happiness with his baby. No, oh, Alicia must feel so... <sighs> so tired and heartbroken. What do people do? Activities available. Just add meaning. He has to find the meaning first. Otherwise, nothing has any meaning. Who are you talking to? Okay. Garbage men don't come at night. Oh, there really was. Oh, that's good. He's not feeling it. Medication. Does he have to take the medication forever? I know the stress has gotten to her, and John doesn't even know how to help. And the thing is, John isn't working anymore, so Alicia is the only one who's earning income. She's the one holding everything together. Oh, he hasn't taken his medication in so long. Oh no. So he has to keep taking medication for the rest of his life. If he doesn't, then this happens. Oh man, that's crazy because he can't even tell that it's an illusion. He hears it, he sees it, he feels it. Good to see you, John. It's been a while. You're not real! Of course I am. It'll be time for you to get back to work. That's the thing, even though he knows it's not real, he can't do anything about it. We've narrowed the bomb's location to somewhere on the eastern seaboard. Their codes have grown increasingly complex. That's what he wants. That's what his subconscious wants. He wants the recognition. He wants to accomplish something. He wants to do something important. That's why these hallucinations happen. Wheeler has no record. Do you think we list our personnel? John, I'm sorry you had to go through all this. Try punching him. I can let the world know what you did. I was so scared you weren't real. Oh man, he's starting to believe it. 1956. I'm just gonna grab the laundry. Okay. I'll draw his bath. It's okay. Without the medication, it's like... He's... He's able to act more like a normal person. The problem is the hallucinations. But with the medication, I think he just loses motivation and, you know, just doesn't feel like doing anything. Oh, wow. Wait, what are you doing? Oh no, please, not the baby! Not the baby, not the baby. Charles, you just watched the baby! No. Charles, he still believed Charles is real! Oh god, thank goodness the baby is okay! Oh, 
else is watching. He was okay. He's watching. Oh, yeah. He's been injected with a cloaking syrup. Oh my goodness. That's how serious it can get. Who are you talking to? It's not her fault. John. She'll compromise us again. No, she won't. Man, I'm getting goosebumps. No! Hey, I need Dr. Rosen. Is he in? No! Oh. Get away! Finish her. I'll trust you. Please do what he says. Move, soldier. Oh, shit. This whole thing is getting scary now. What does he understand? What's his conclusion? Well, she can't be real. She never gets old. Okay, so that was the the thing that helps him to decide, is it? Because Marcy never gets old. You see them now? Oh yeah, he sees them, but now he's sure they aren't real. I couldn't help with the baby. I couldn't. I couldn't respond to my wife. Schizophrenia is degenerative over time. You are getting worse. Oh, it gets worse over time. Damn. I can work it out. Well, I mean, it's kind of. Is that the baby? Baby's in my mother's child. Oh crap! Imagine if he even hallucinates the baby. What's the end stage of schizophrenia? Without treatment, John. <laughs> That is his metabolic entirely. So he can't even trust his five senses. He can't trust what he sees, what he smells, what he hears, what he tastes, what he feels. And he won't even know what's real because the mind controls all the senses. Rosen's waiting outside. I can't go back to that hospital. Oh, all of this must be so hard on Alicia. I feel, I feel sad for her. I will try to figure this out. You shouldn't be here. I'm not safe anymore. Honestly, that's scary as heck seeing a child run around in your house when you know there's no child there. But at least he wouldn't have to be afraid of ghosts anymore, right? It's not his fault that he has schizophrenia. He hasn't said to call if you try and kill me or anything. I don't even know if this Alicia is real. What if he just imagines her? You don't know it's real. This. Maybe part of the waking from the dream. Maybe it isn't here. Maybe it's here. Yeah, I'm willing to believe that this Alicia is a real one because he has never hallucinated about real people who exist. Hello, Martin. Martin Hansen. Seems that you won after all, Martin. They were wrong, John. No one wins. Yeah, when you grow up, you realize that it's not all about winning and losing. Tell him your work is critical. John, please! Is there any chance that you could ignore what I just did? Of course. What are old friends for? Is that what we are, Martin? Friends? Of course. We always have been. But I was wondering if I could hang around. Will you be needing an office? Well, I could just work out of the library. Are you fucking tool? The world will burn to ashes! You're not real! John, John, it's okay. I just heard what happened. I'm sorry, John. Ladies and gentlemen, the great John man! You know that stress triggers the delusions. These delusions just won't leave him alone. Maybe try again tomorrow. He might need a companion with someone he can feel like. Maybe get him a help dog or something. Maybe a pet would help. Because you've been a very good friend. I won't talk to you again. And go from your baby. I was wondering about that audio course. This will be my first class. Not your first. You be young guys. <laughs> They're just immature people. Ignore them, John. They're immature kids. Thanks. Oh, his son's all grown up. We never got his son's name. You know, I'm unhappy that he's coping. He seems to be coping quite well. At least now his delusions are only limited to three main people. William, 
Marcy and Charles. 1978. Well, it's been over 20 years. Did you just sell Greenwood? How can you tell? Tell me, Kelly. Oh, I've been studying your equilibrium. When was the last time you ate? Excuse me? <laughs> you know, food. Uh, oh, that's nice. So far, the two I think I might want to steal this. I've been gone. They've always been there for the past 20 years. But I've gotten used to ignoring them, and I think as a result, they've kind of given up on me. That's actually very good. I've got to keep feeding them for them to stay alive. Yeah, and if you starve them, they'll be gone. Well, they're my past, Martin. Everybody's haunted by their past. You scared? Terrified. Petrified. Terrified. <laughs> Mortified. Petrified. Stupefied by you. 1994. Can you see him? Yeah. You sure? <laughs> Forgive me, I'm just always suspicious of new people. He's learned to really take it in stride now. I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. And I'm here to tell you that you're being considered for the Nobel Prize. Oh, this place hasn't changed. Shall we have tea? I would have thought the uh, nominations for the Nobel Prize would have been secret. So you came here to find out if I was crazy. Dance around the podium. Strip naked and squawk like a chicken and things of this nature. Okay, that's too much. Yes, it is possible. Like a diet of the mind, I choose not to indulge certain appetites. Professor Nash. It's good to have you here, John. Oh, he's getting the pens. He's finally getting what he's seen so... So many years ago, when he was young. 1994. Wow, Alicia really aged beautifully. I ask, what truly is life? And I have made the most important discovery of my career. The most important discovery of my life. What is that? It is only in the mysterious equations of love that any logical reasons can be found. I'm only here tonight because of you. He's a lucky man. Lucky he found Alicia when he did, and Alicia found him. Thank you. Oh, that's so sweet of him. He got it. He got his recognition. He got his accomplishment. He got the Nobel Peace Prize. And the Nobel Prize. And he kept the handkerchief through all these ups and downs of life. What is it? Nothing at all. with me, young lady. <laughs> Nash's theories have influenced global trade negotiations, national labor relations, and even breakthroughs in evolutionary biology. John and Alicia Nash live in Princeton, New Jersey. John keeps regular office hours in the mathematics department. He still walks the campus every day. I never really heard the song that it was that they won an award for the All Love Can Be. Okay, I think this is that song. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps. This is very nice vocals. Yeah, this is a song. All right, this is a very nice biographical movie. The first thing that I want to check is, did the real... John Nash have schizophrenia or anything like that. He did. John Nash, recipient of the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1994 and subject of the award-winning 2001 film A Beautiful Mind, which we just watched, he was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia in 1958 at the age of 29. At 30 years old, John Nash suffered his first bout of full-blown schizophrenia. A disease sometimes called the cancer of the mind. And his wife, oh, not Alicia, Aulish, Aulishai, Aulishai, Aulishai Nash, was actually 26 at the time. Okay, so uh, Alicia was younger by John by four years. Unlike the movie, uh, he didn't see the delusions like Charles or the Soviet spies. So rather he heard them. So the real John Nash had auditory hallucinations. 
which I feel can be very very scary too because imagine if I mean it's a good thing that he can't see the delusions because it probably be worse he doesn't know who's real and who's not but auditory is also very scary because imagine if you're sitting alone at home and then you hear people walking around or cupboards moving or you just hear what's not there and that's that can be very very distracting after john's full-blown uh schizophrenia at 30 years old for the next three decades he was plagued by paranoia auditory hallucinations disorganized thinking and a decreasing ability to connect with others apparently with uh, schizophrenia uh, as a general rule with exceptions that as people with schizophrenia age, they have fewer symptoms. So when Nash hits uh, you know, his late 40s and 50s, his life gets better. It's not shocking. It gets better as you age older. Hmm, okay. In the movie, they said that uh, schizophrenia is degenerative and it will only get worse over time. So this was the assumption at the time because most people still assume schizophrenia is a permanent ailment that becomes more debilitating more or worse over time but the truth is this disease is not only potentially reversible it can also get better with age which is great schizophrenia is quite a mouthful isn't it schizophrenia every time i pronounce it i feel like i might be pronouncing it wrong <laughs> schizophrenia based on what i've read here i guess it's uh, safe to say that even if you or someone you know is diagnosed with schizophrenia don't give up because schizophrenia is like like an ill-prepared long distance runner it will slowly fade away as you age as for john's case apparently his recovery was not related to you know using medicines or drugs he he said himself i emerged from irrational thinking and ultimately without using any medicine other than a natural hormonal changes in aging basically he only got better as he aged but at the same time, he also wrote before that he began to intellectually reject some of the delusionally influenced lines of thinking. I think we saw that in the movie where John realized that everything was not real when he found out that Marcy didn't age. So through that logical thinking, he managed to you know, dig himself out from these uh, delusions knowing that they're not real. I'm not really sure how the real Nash did it though because the real Nash apparently only had auditory uh, hallucinations. So I don't know how he got out of that true logical thinking. But good for him. An affliction later in life is more likely to lead toward recovery. If a 15-year-old was diagnosed with schizophrenia compared with a 30-year-old, then the 15-year-old will have apparently a less likely chance of recovery. But an older person would find it easier to recover. Men recover less frequently than women. Oh, and schizophrenia is genetic? Because Nash's younger son, John Jr., has also been diagnosed with schizophrenia. It took John about a uh, quarter of a century to rationally will his own recovery. But of course, during this period, he had a very devoted wife, Alicia. You know, he had his mother and his sister and a supportive mathematics community. So yeah, I mean, schizophrenia is a very terrible disease, but with loving people who are willing to help you and support you through this difficult time, it, it's not impossible to get out of it and to reduce the symptoms. Okay, so the real John Nash still has a family, you know, his mother and sister, but in the movie, he has no one. So let's find out a little bit more about this. Like, what exactly is schizophrenia? Like, is it hereditary? Which means, can you inherit it from your parents or stuff like that? And just the general symptoms of it. Schizophrenia is a serious mental disorder in which people interpret reality abnormally. It may result in some combination of hallucinations or delusions and extremely disordered thinking and behavior that impairs daily functioning. So it can be disabling. So in very serious cases, you might not be able to do daily tasks such as uh, maybe bathing or eating or changing your clothes. Or in the case of John, he nearly drowned his own son because he thought Charles was watching him. And it is common for people with 
schizophrenia to have paranoid thoughts or hear voices. If you have a relative or someone you know close to you, like a grandfather or great grandfather who had schizophrenia, could you be worried? Well, the answer is schizophrenia tends to run in families. Yes, but no single gene is thought to be responsible. It's more likely that you know there's a many many different genes that combine together to make some people more vulnerable to the condition. Having these genes uh, doesn't necessarily mean that you'll develop schizophrenia. It varies from person to person. And this mental disorder only affects about 1% of the population. If you have a family member with schizophrenia, it's definitely a risk factor for developing the condition. But of course, 80% uh, of people with this mental disorder they do not have relatives with the condition. Early intervention can potentially limit the impact that schizophrenia has on a person's life. So if you have someone, a relative, or someone related to you with schizophrenia, get yourself checked. Wait, how do you know when you're starting to develop schizophrenia? It could happen anywhere from your late teens to your early 20s. The subtle hints may be uh, difficulty in school or interpersonal relationships. Okay, that doesn't help much because you could have difficulty in school, but it doesn't mean you have schizophrenia. It could be something else. Maybe it's ADHD or, you know, some other stuff. And interpersonal relationships also depends. You know, it could be that a person is asocial, like Nash, who doesn't like to interact with people, or maybe he's just not used to communicating with people. Maybe he's just an extreme introvert. So these subtle hints are not very helpful. In the end, I guess we still have to rely on episodes of psychosis where, you know, maybe they're hallucinating or screaming or they have delusions or stuff like that or confused speech, maybe. A lack of motivation is also a symptom. Wow. Okay. I'm sure a lot of people nowadays have a lack of motivation to do a lot of things. Uh, so I'd rather not take this as a symptom. Maybe there are more other symptoms. Let's see. Um, right. You could be diagnosed with schizophrenia if you experience some of the following symptoms, such as, okay, hallucinations, delusions, disorganized thinking, lack of motivation. We already know all that. Slow movement. Okay. Change in sleep patterns. <laughs> That's not reliable. I change my sleep patterns pretty often. Uh, poor grooming or hygiene. Ah, is that really considered a symptom? Some people just really have poor hygiene. Like they just don't want to take a bath for weeks or don't want to wash their hair for months. I don't know. Some people are just like that. Uh, changes in body language and emotions. Lost interest in social activities. Oh, those are very general symptoms. So in the end, yeah, the best symptom indicator is still hallucinations and delusions. Oh, I think this article seems much more helpful here uh, from helpguide.org. Schizophrenia is a challenging brain disorder. It makes it difficult to distinguish what is real and what is not real. It makes it more difficult to think clearly, to manage your emotions or relate to others or function normally. It affects how you behave, how you think, and how you see the world. So the most common form is what John Nash had, which is called paranoid schizophrenia. They have an altered perception of reality. They may see or hear things that don't exist. They may speak in confusing ways. I don't know how confusing, like maybe they, they, their speech will slur, or they may say things that don't make sense. And uh, they, they believe that others are trying to harm them. They believe the whole world is out to get them. They feel like they're being constantly watched. Oh, and apparently some people may abuse alcohol or drugs to self-medicate. Many people with this mental disorder, they withdraw from the outside world, they act out in confusion and fear, and they are at a very increased risk of attempting to end their own lives, especially during their psychotic episodes or during their periods of depression. If you do have someone you know who's acting like this, please do take note and try to get them treatment. We'll check out the treatments for schizophrenia a little later. Treatment options are improving all the time. There are plenty of things you can do to manage the disorder, so don't give up. So let's see the early warning signs of schizophrenia. 
In some people, uh, this mental disorder appears suddenly and without warning. But for most people, it actually comes slowly with subtle warning signs and a gradual decline in functioning. Friends and family members will know early on that something is wrong, but you, know, you don't know exactly what is wrong. In the early phase, uh, a person may seem eccentric, maybe unmotivated or completely emotionless and reclusive. People start to isolate themselves, uh, neglecting their appearance, say peculiar things, and show a general indifference to life. They may even abandon their hobbies and activities. Hmm, now I'm trying to think of people who might exhibit these symptoms. I don't think I have or know anyone like that. So that's a good thing. And here's the funny thing, because I think at one point when I was much younger, when I was a, you know, a teenager, I think like before I turned 17 or 15, uh, my parents actually thought I had this because I like to uh, be alone and just don't like to hang out very much. But that's only because I'm an introvert. <laughs> so like they thought I had something as serious as schizophrenia. I like, didn't. I just I was just an introvert. I like my books. I like my games, and I like to you know be by myself. I'm totally comfortable with silence, and I'm totally fine with not hanging out for long periods of time. I can totally hang out with you know my books and just relax on a really nice quiet day. So yeah, I think my parents were just being like we're just blowing things out of proportion. I learned to be a little bit more extroverted, you know, and hang out with more people, talk and join competitions and stuff like that. So yeah, I learned how to be an extroverted introvert. Okay, back to the schizophrenia here. So the most common early warning signs include depression, social withdrawal, hostility or suspiciousness, extreme reaction to criticism. Hmm, I know some people of that, but pretty sure they don't have schizophrenia. Deterioration of personal hygiene, okay? A flat expressionless gaze, so they become more emotionless. Inability to cry or express joy or inappropriate laughter or cry. Hmm. That's strange. I think the inability to, to feel or like dampened emotions are also one of the symptoms of like psychopaths or something like that. I don't know if I remember that correctly. Uh, oversleeping, huh, that's a symptom. Or insomnia, well I do have insomnia. Forgetful, unable to concentrate, odd or irrational statements, strange use of words or way of speaking. Okay, so these are the early early warning signs. Take notes and take care of yourself. Uh, the symptoms, I'm not going to go through them because we pretty sure I mentioned that earlier already. So what is the treatment? Well, ignoring the problem won't make it go away. Uh, but in John Nash's case, in the movie anyway, he ignored the delusions and that kind of helped. But also maybe because he aged, so delusions weren't as aggressive anymore compared to the beginning. So the best thing that you should do if you realize you have schizophrenia or if you realize your friend has schizophrenia is to find a mental health professional. And don't believe in the myth that, oh, schizophrenia can't get better, it'll only get worse, nah, nah, nah. Believe that recovery is possible because it is. So it's not a life sentence or ever worsening symptom. Nah, don't worry about it. You'll get better for sure. With the right treatment and self-help, many people can regain their normal normal lives, normal functioning. So the most effective treatment is uh, usually medication, therapy, lifestyle change, and social support. Very important. It requires long-term treatment. So even if you're starting to feel better, you still should continue the treatment to prevent new episodes and to stay symptom free. And as your symptoms improve, your doctor can lower the dosage or maybe even help you change your medication. Do take note that the medication only helps reduce the, the psychotic symptoms such as the hallucinations, delusions, paranoia, and disordered thinking, but it is not a cure. And medication won't help treat social withdrawal, lack of motivation, and lack of emotional expressiveness because the social withdrawal and all that are probably a result of the hallucinations and delusions and all that. 
once you have medications to reduce the hallucinations and delusions, you should still you still need to put in the effort to go hang out, go socialize, and motive find ways to motivate yourself to start doing things. It's not just thinking, oh, I take a medication, I get better. Nah, you gotta take the medication, and then you still gotta put in effort to socialize and you know start to come out of your shell, I guess. So if you have a friend like that, don't think that him taking medication will just solve all our problems. Get him to socialize more, hang out more with that person, or just try to help him talk more and stuff like that. A group therapy may also be a good idea. You can meet people and connect with people who are in a similar situation and maybe they can offer valuable advice to overcome some certain road bumps or some certain obstacles you may be facing on a road to recovery. Here are ways for self-help. I mean, I'm not going to go through this like super detailed. I would advise you to go. You can check out helpguide.org, schizophrenia signs and symptoms. So I'm just going to really roughly go through this so you can kind of get a general image of how you would help yourself or a friend. So the seven keys to self-help would be seek social support, stay involved with your work or education, uh, consider volunteering, joining a support group, or joining a club, take up a hobby, do, do something. Do your best to manage your stress because high levels of stress uh, can trigger more episodes. So as we saw in John Nash's case, right, they mentioned that the more stress he's in, the, the more the delusions get more serious. Try adopting a regular relaxation practice, you know, yoga, deep breathing, meditation, uh, deep breathing really helps. You just spend maybe five minutes to be aware of your breathing and breathe in for five seconds, hold for five seconds, breathe out for five seconds, and then hold for five seconds and breathe in for five seconds. So that's the, I think that was called the square breathing method. So it can help you really calm down if you just do that for five to 10 minutes, or you can just do really, really deep breaths, breathing in all the way, hold it for a while and breathe out all the way. I find that actually helps. And get regular exercise. Yes, this I definitely agree. Go find something to do. Go jogging. Go uh, just go to the gym. Just exercise both your arms and legs. Do star jumps. You know, walking, running, cycling, swimming, dancing. So many things you could do. Personally, I have uh, badminton. So I love playing badminton. It's my hobby. And I go for badminton every week. So yeah, get some regular exercise once a week, twice a week. It'll help. Get plenty of sleep. Okay, this is something I have trouble with. <laughs> kind of hard for me to get proper amounts of sleep, but I know it's bad. So I you know, try to sleep, avoid alcohol, drugs, and nicotine. Yeah, okay, that, you know, definitely, right? Even, even if you don't have schizophrenia, I would recommend you to avoid that as much as possible. Don't take drugs and don't smoke. Don't take alcohol because it'll just improve your health overall. Eat regular nutritious meals. Oh, yes, definitely. Because sometimes eating a lot of these junk food, I mean, this is a separate topic entirely, but eating a lot of junk food, a lot of salty, sweet food, sugar, salt, and all that, it can really affect you physically and mentally too. You know, you can be, maybe you're easily getting angry, easily irritable, all that. It's because of the effects that your food have on your body. I'm not going to talk much about this, but definitely please eat properly. Yeah, I think at this point I've talked a lot, maybe a little bit too much about schizophrenia already. Uh, I believe we've pretty much covered everything that we need to know. So if you have yourself or your friend who you think might have schizophrenia, get help as soon as you can, look at the symptoms, try self-help, and just don't give up because it will recover. It's an eventual recovery, it's a slow recovery, but it will recover eventually. So as we come back to the movie, uh, we can see that in the movie, John Nash is someone who is seeking for recognition he wants that accomplishment yeah sorry uh, bro what, what did i just say accomplishment <laughs> he wants that accomplishment he wants that recognition but of course i think it's just human nature to want recognition and not not recognition from the world itself but maybe just recognition from your parents or from your friends or from you know, your peers i think it's natural to want this kind of thing it's just that I feel you shouldn't go too much into it because when you try to pursue too much of, try to care too much of what others think of you, it's not a good long-term thing. I guess what I'm trying to say is just that 
wanting recognition is not a bad thing. It's just that you got to be careful and don't let that rule over your life. Because as we can see in the movie, in John Nash's case, just because he couldn't find that original idea and stuff, he just starts hurting himself. A mental breakdown, nervous breakdown. Yeah, so don't let it get up to that point. And outside of that movie, I think Russell Crowe really played his part very well. Like the way he he, he avoids eye contact most of the time, like you should just look at the eye and look away, look at the eye, look away. I totally know how that feels because I was kind of like that too when I was a introvert much younger and i i find it kind of hard to just look people in the eye because it's like you look at it and it's like just look away naturally i guess it just feels weird to look people in the eye for too long you know before this so i totally get how he feels and since he's supposedly a social he doesn't like human interaction so the way he acted all that out was really really smooth and you can see that he is that type of a social person. All I can say is Russell Crowe did a great job and Jennifer Connelly also played the part of a loving but stressed out wife really well and she's actually quite beautiful I have to say. Very beautiful lady and also her character is very assertive. People do like assertive and direct women. That's it for A Beautiful Mind and the next uh, movies that I'm gonna watch, the ones who won the poll this week are High Noon and News of the World starring Tom Hanks. So look forward to them and I will see you in the next video. Peace!